We're doing a demo of the Audio Tools module called Speaker Distortion, and that's here in the Speakers menu. It's available for purchase uh, as an in-app purchase in the Audio Tools app. We are running this today on the simulator on my MacBook um, so that we can make a nice video. Uh, functionality is exactly the same though, so we can completely show you how this works. So uh, basically this is a, a very easy module to run. And what we're going to be doing is actually computing or measuring the distortion percentage, the total harmonic distortion plus noise uh, of a speaker driver. And the way you'll do this is hook up the output of audio tools to the input of an amplifier that's connected to a single speaker. And you can, you know, maybe pan left or right or just select one speaker to isolate the one driver. And then we're going to use the microphone in the iPhone or another microphone, such as iPro Mic or iAudio Interface, and put that near the speaker and measure. Uh, then we're going to just read out the distortion. And uh, I'll show you how this works, and then we'll talk about why you might want to do this. So it's pretty simple to operate. Just pick a frequency here and pick an appropriate frequency. You know, you don't want to pick 31 hertz if it's a small speaker. Um, but on the other hand, kind of the lowest uh, frequency you can pick that the driver can handle efficiently and well is uh, a good place to start. Although, you know, feel free to look at all these frequencies. So let's say we pick 250 hertz and we're going to turn this on. And what we've actually turned on is the MacBook speaker here. You can probably hear that. And as soon as I stop talking, we'll get a reading of distortion. And that's 22% is fairly high distortion. It makes sense. We've got probably a one inch by two inch speaker in this uh, computer here. Let's go up to 500 hertz and try it. And there, that, that's a good example. The 500 hertz we saw a few percent. It was about 5% distortion. And, you know, you will typically see distortion numbers 1% and higher for speaker drivers, even for good speakers. That's... That is very normal. Um, what you're really looking for and what can really help you is to first of all compare one speaker with another. So say you have two identical drivers and you test the distortion on speaker A and it's 5% and you test the distortion on speaker B and it's 10%, well you know there's a problem with speaker B. And the other thing you can do here is you can test your monitors or your speakers daily, weekly, whatever you want and see has something changed because you will see a change in the THD long before you really can hear anything. So you'll see the distortion maybe go up by 50% or, or double, go from 5 to 10% or 1 to 2 or 3%. And then you'll know there's a problem and maybe you walk up to the speaker and push on the, the uh, speaker cone and you hear a little scratching or something. So, you know, it, it's a great way to test uh, that and even in you know, it to some extent to test quality between speakers at least as as one of many factors um, i'm going to show one more thing here which is how the distortion varies with output level and then i'll talk about why Okay, sorry if that was loud. <laughs> but uh, the interesting thing there is you saw on very low levels, we saw high distortion. Why is that? Okay, the reason is that the distortion calculation measures everything but the selected frequency. Uh, you know, what, what uh, energy is available everywhere except the selected frequency compared to the overall signal which includes that frequency. So on low levels, the overall signal is very small, so there's not a lot of difference between that and the, and the total. So the higher you can get the level, the lower the potential for the THD, but, and you see we got down to like maybe 2% in this area here. But then what happens as you start getting above a certain point, usually you'll start actually creating more distortion in the driver because of physics of the cone and the cone actually 
um, physically distorting. So, you know, go ahead and try to find the lowest possible distortion number you can read, and that is a number you want to pay attention to. Uh, maybe write down in a log or a journal and then keep track of that going forward. And that's a look at the speaker distortion module by Studio 6 Digital.